Welcome back to the second installation of Apex Hills and Tire Squeals of 2020. I've been meaning to do this for weeks, but um, the old dog next door barks for four hours straight, and uh, it's kind of hard with that kind of background noise. Where to start? Okay, so one rule for life that has been passed down to me is never complain about your financial situation because everyone has finance problems. So with that said, I'm not going to directly complain about my finance problems, but I am going to elaborate on the end of 2019. As you probably know, I've been looking, searching, scouring for a Series 1 Honda Civic, an EB1, I believe, off the top of my head. And I finally found one on an auction site. So I posted a bid of $2,000, which... I think is oh was it 1800 it was less than what he wanted but in my personal opinion it was completely fair for what one of those cars are and um, I'm glad it didn't reach reserve because I didn't get my uh, holiday bon my holiday bonus I didn't get my holiday pay over Christmas so things were pretty damn tight but before I found out about this, I had also put the word out to a fair few people that uh, I'm looking for an RX4 front end for Project Fatwagon. And I'm glad no one came through with that either. Um, obviously, I specify that I'd want something that's in very poor condition, because then it's going to be cheaper for myself. But uh, it didn't really matter how cheap it was going to be, um, that would not have been feasible. So looking into the future here, what I when I say uh, short term, I mean within the next sort of year or 18 months. And we'll start with my current daily driver, my RX-8. And in the short term, nothing's going to happen apart from keep, keep it running. Like I really do want to get the body kit done, which I've been doing for far too many years. So uh, that's going to be a long term one. Short term is get fat wagon on the road. Um, I've just made these bulletin points on my phone. I haven't really thought too much about this. Eh? Well, I haven't thought too much about it today. Um, there's still a wee way to go on there. We're still doing rust. I might do a, uh, a live video. You might get to see my ugly face again. The reason why I have, we haven't posted anything for quite a while is because we're still, I'm still mucking around. And you don't want to see me welding and grinding, welding and grinding, welding and grinding. I think that's, I think that's one of the previous podcasts where I've said all that. Um, and if you keep up to date on my Instagram, we now have a third car, which is the boss's car. I did have it posted as a 1997 Lancer, Mitsubishi Lancer. Um, you'll find that in this country... Well, I found in this country, I should say, that a lot of cars are, when they're registered in this country, is not the year of manufacture. So, technically, it's a 1995. It's like Lancer, but it's not literally an Evo, but it would be the Evo 3. Um, I once had a KE35 Toyota SR Coupe Corolla, and it was registered as a 1979, and if I'm correct, they didn't make them in 1979. So, that's that's what I'm basing basing the years on but uh, I'm pretty sure it's the Evo 3 equivalent of the Lancer um, so 8 RX-8 wagon Lancer the Honda Civic like I mentioned before I tried to put a bid on one and with that nothing seems to be popping up and I don't just mean a price range more so not in price range but I mean I don't know how the guy that I did put a bid on could have it legally on the road with that amount of rust actually but that's not the point can't find him can't find him for the right price it's like my old man always used to say to me don't worry we'll always find something better out there so I was also considering within the year possibly buying a new daily a new daily driver and I was probably going to go for GM. A, uh, I want a Holden Commodore, preferably Calais, and preferably uh, V8. 
but I don't think that's quite going to happen. But that, that there's, there's a possibility on the cards. If I get my ducks in a row this year, we will see about that happening. Also, another another idea that I've had for quite some time, which I might follow up, is I forget what it's called. I'll put some, I'll put an image on the screen with everything I say here. Um, a Mazda six wagon. Um, I forget the year. I'm going to say 2005 off the top of my head. I'll again I'll post the correct picture of what I want. Um, if I hadn't have bought the RX8, I would have bought one of those. And I've always wanted to do a wide body kit or possibly adapt a rocket bunny kit to it. Probably more wide body kit than anything. Okay, I have this thing. I quite like my station wagons. So uh, it's it's been an idea, and they should be coming down in price. But um, again, with Project Fat Wagon, that's the priority. But uh, if I if I happen to get something else, another toy around here, you know, I wouldn't complain. But and this one I'm going to have to uh, find on my phone also because I found it today. I found someone who did a digital image. I'll, again, it'll be posted as I. Obviously, I record this with a microphone, but I will post this. An image, and it looks like a 240Z. But. Oh, how to describe it? The back end almost looks like it could possibly be a 350, but not. A 350Z, but not 100%. Or the back end looks like a Datsun 240K also known as the uh, C110 Skyline and the front end goes into what almost looks like an R35 bumper and I was thinking I, th I was thinking as this is incredibly out there and incredibly outrageous and it's going to piss off a lot of people but uh fuck you by your own I thought if I could find a fiberglass 240Z front end and a rocket bunny kit again, yes I do have a thing for rocket bunny kits as well, that I would possibly change the whole front end of the RX-8, keep the factory arches but have the 240Z front end go through the center, so we're now talking about a 70s style round headlights and headlight buckets rocket bunny style front bumper and possibly flatten the back end which would take some work but it was doable i mean if i was fully serious i'd probably go to fiverr and get someone to digitally knock this up so i could see what to see what i'm looking at and how much i would be looking at doing and if it would make sense the reason why is because 240Zs are not cheap and not easy to come by and when I say not easy to come by I'm talking about quality like my 260Z was was quite possibly living next to the ocean for a good 20 years with the amount of rust before we got rid of it that's another story altogether um, but again the RX-8 owes me nothing it's paid off and I have a body kit lying around and then I'd be adding fiberglass work and steel work to the back end. It's an idea if I got another daily driver. Again, if Fap Wagon was going with, I use that as a daily driver. Yeah, it's 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 incredibly out there. And normally I joke about, oh, start up a GoFundMe for it. No, no, this would have to would have to have quite a bit of interest to even dare think about something like that. Again, this is really out there, and I'm just thinking out loud. I haven't planned it enough. If I found someone on Fiverr for five bucks to digitally knock up a drawing of what I'm talking about, yeah, I would I would do that, and we'd take it from there. So another thing I also teased on uh, Instagram was a story about how the government took my wheels. And I also wrote on Instagram that a lot of my stories that I have of back in the day, I have a lot of old school footage which probably doesn't mean much to you unless you were from the, the city back in the day. But I mentioned about how the government took my wheels. When I say the government took my wheels, I mean figuratively, not literally. I haven't got unpaid fines, nothing along those lines. But um, I got caught out with another totally awesome government idea. That's sarcasm. 
over in this country you get road user charges which is just road tax charges and you get a warrant of fitness or a WOF for short WOF which basically means your car gets looked over make sure that it complies to standards and it's in a safe standard to be on the road and I've had many an argument about certain things most I agree with but this one I got caught out on was after spending many many thousands of dollars like nearly 10 grand on mags because uh if i've got the photos still i'll post them that um i spun out trying to scare a boy at work and uh smashed both my rear rims so after that i upgraded to um the ones i broke were nine nine and a half inch rears and then i upgraded to ten and a half inch rears which had uh 18s the 265s and someone came up with the grand idea well shall we start we'll start from the start originally the law was that you could tub your uh you could tub your tires as in extend the wheel wells inside the car or you could flare your guards as long as the tire was not exposed um and it was covered by the top of the guard there are certain laws for hot rods which go fenderless, but um, that was that was the general gist of it. So I had my guards pulled out 40 mil on each side to make sure I could accommodate two six fives on the rear. There, I think there was zero offset on the mags. And uh, yeah, I got caught out on a new law that says um, you're not allowed mag wheels or rims, whatever you want to call it. F uh, what they say 40 mil wider than factory um my sister actually took my car for a warrant for me and i rang up when it failed on it and i said you're kidding the, the guards are fled that they, they thought they're fine and that's when the guy informed me that the law changed so uh a ridiculous law which says basically you can't have cool fat tires on your car you have to have them certified certification is another thing altogether it's because the warrant man the warrant of fitness standards the man doing it he can only do so much and when modifications happen some are you need i don't know how to explain it you probably you probably need some more expert help and this man puts a certification plate on your vehicle which says hey this is allowed i've checked it out uh the government has made this guy pay through the app to be left alone for this modification basically i don't want to be one of these um fight the power podcast but yeah basically it's more government tax so technically the government has taken my mags off me and as with the rx8 i don't know what's happening with it but having some nice pulled out guards and having your factory 225s i believe they are on the back doesn't cut it so uh, we might be looking at another set of rims and possibly looking at offsets i'm kind of glad that the mags are off because I had uh, I forget the brand the wolves which every doodle whacker bought because they seem to be the easiest and the widest ones on the market and I don't want to be an individual like everybody else I don't want the same rim that everyone else has I don't want the potential for some of these wankers which have tried to steal my mags because they have the same set of mags or just not wide enough but yeah, that's my rant. Um, I know this is probably going to be a short episode. Uh, fingers crossed, still waiting to have special guest coming in. And we should be hearing from Jimmy and Nelson shortly. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed another episode of Apex Seals and Tire Squeals. And uh, enjoy. Don't enjoy, I just need a better outro.